This week on The Real Watchlist Plus, we start our series on classic silent films. We're doing the 1902 masterpiece, A Trip to the Moon by George Melius. So come with us on a ride to the moon. The Trip to the Moon, or in French, Le Voyage dans la Lune. It's a 1902 French science fiction adventure written, directed, and produced by George Méliès. It follows a group of astronomers who travel to the moon, they explore the surface, and they escape from an underground group of selenites. And I must say, it's only 14 minutes, but for 14 minutes, boy, do you get your money's worth. And it changed the world of cinema. Joe, can we hear you through all that hair? I don't know, but I, I am dressed up as the professor that George Méliès had performed. He was the professor that came in to, dis to draw in silent energy that you know, we're going to go to the moon, the moon. But folks, I am hot as hell here, and I look like Cher in her return back from the dead <laughs> tour. So I am going to disappear like in a George Milliers version of a disappearing act. Are you ready? Yeah. Boy, that feels a lot better. I will say though, the robe that I was wearing yeah. is a period piece from the early 1900s. So a friend of ours, Diane, if you're watching, we love you, Diane, uh, had given us this wonderful stage robe that was used in many theatrical um, performances. The costume that I was wearing, you could buy a lot of the items on Amazon. Take a look at the caption below and you'll get to check out the beard, the hair, the hat, and even this shirt of the iconic moon from Trip to the Moon. And me, I have this cool moon tiara, I guess it is, and it has three different versions. It sparkles, it changes, but I love it so much. I just love it. The rest of this, you know, i am uh, been around a little while. This is like total 80s was in my closet. What can I tell you? <laughs> yeah, so was I in the closet. Yeah. This movie had such an impact not only on the world of cinema, but on me too. Look at my show notes, folks. I just went crazy. Now, we're in no way going to get through pages. all these show notes I versus her two pieces flip. of paper. Like you said, it's only 14 minutes, but at the time it was considered a feature film because there's really no other films before that, that were that long. Usually it was like a, what, two minute, three minute film? Yeah. And usually there were documentaries. They were just uh, film, film from different facets of life. So when I look at film, I try to think about the viewer at the time in which this was screened. And in doing so, we're adding a little bit of an extra facet to our show. We're calling it Classic Cinema Sips. We're going to share with you a recipe of a classic cocktail or beer or something of a beverage that you could drink while watching films such as these and this one is oh boy here we go and he's he knows all about drinks i'm a wimp i'm a shirley temple uh prosecco girl so i have a way of tasting it okay, you well, go first let me share with you the gin fizz so the ingredients to this gin fizz um two ounces of gin three fourths ounces of fresh lemon juice, a three fourth ounce simple syrup, club soda, ice, and a lemon twist to add to the sophistication of the gin fizz. One, two, three. three. Wow. And is that a moon? Yeah, it's a moon. Were you like, did you have like an epileptic fit or something when you drew that thing? It's, it's the all... dark side of the moon. The, oh, Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd. So Deb, why a 10? Well, and the I'll reason tell you a why 10, mine wasn't a 10. Okay, the reason it was a 10 was I happened to not be insanely in love with silent cinema, but I do like it a lot. This film takes you into this magical world of a dreamlike quality. And this thing was loaded with special effects that Melias created, which were fantastic. Just think of the time, think of what he did, think that how innovative this was, what a creative person he was, right. and with the limited material, mm -hmm. and he had adversity also at, on against him, yes. which was a person 
Thomas Edison, the more I read about Thomas Edison, the more I think I don't like him as a person. He was just bad with Tesla. Yes. He, he impeded so many people. He made secret copies of this thing. He was like a snake. So and he the, released them, so he never made any money, Malias. He was very, very poor. Right. Well, he made money in France. Mm -hmm. It was considered a budget success. I mean, he um, the film was one of the largest budgets at that time, 10,000 mm -hmm. to about 30,000 francs. Uh, but when he tried to distribute it outside the States, just like you said, right. that's where Edison jumps in, copies him and a whole other group of cohorts. Yeah. And he never made a dime in, in the And look US. what he did to Tesla too, Edison. He always mm -hmm. did this stuff, but he was a smart cookie. Mm -hmm. And you know, whatever, but he wasn't a nice guy, but I guess the barons of industrialization and everything back then. Right. They were a little, they were tough. Right. Well, while the, the copyright laws were very limited, yeah. they weren't enforced. Um, again, you're thinking about someone who's from France going to the States and, and George Melies sends his brother there to try mm -hmm. to create their American film studio to try to compete. But unfortunately, Edison had already grabbed copies of this film. Yeah. was distributing it to all these film houses and they were paying royalties to Edison, even though he had nothing to do Always. with it whatsoever. The reason why I, I, I was going for a 10, but like, there is no storyline. There is no narrative per se. And George Melius, in his work, really never had one. That's not really how he put a film together. He was a magician. So his big thing was showing his magical proudness, his tricks on the silver screen. People should watch it so they have a better understanding of classic movies, especially the silent film era and the beginnings of film. Because before that, you really only had like documentaries, you had people watering grass and you had people riding, you know, a horse or, you know, something very uh, every day. You had people coming out of a warehouse. Right. Working. So this set a standard for future films to come. So you had George Melies, grew up in a family where... Melies. 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 There we go. Uh, <laughs> uh, so one day, George Melias. Melias. Melias gets an invitation to the Luminaire brothers. Their Luminaire. first. The, the Luminaire you, brothers. Me. They show their first commercial, commercially viewed film, which was a train coming down to the station. Now, remember, before that, you had to look at a box, put a coin in, and it was an individual kind of you know, spectacle. Right. And they have that at Disney World. I don't know if they still have it, but it used to go on Main Street mm -hmm. and there was a little thing where they had the penny, you put the penny in and mm -hmm. you'd look and they had that. They probably don't have it anymore because yeah, they got rid of a lot they're of stuff bored Disney. with stuff, you know, yeah, Disney. Disney went yeah, south. They did. But now you can watch in Moss, a group of people in a theater. And Melies saw an opportunity of, wow, wait a minute, this is something, I want to buy that. He couldn't buy it. Right. Luminaire Brothers wouldn't sell it to right. him, no matter how much he offered them. He actually went to uh, back to England right. and bought a kind of a similar cinemagraphique. Did I say it right? That's what yeah, the Yeah, close enough. Okay. Melies takes this piece of equipment, retrofits it, re-engineers it, and creates a camera and a projector at the same time. Correct. And he's able to um, film everyday life, almost like what the Edison was doing at the time. So one day he's filming a Parisian street and his camera jams. Fixes the film, films in the same position, fixes the film, starts rolling again. And now there's um, women traversing and there's uh, a, a funeral going on. So you're seeing a funeral procession. When he develops the film, he didn't think anything of it. But when he develops it, he realizes, wait a minute, men to women. And I just changed the bus to a funeral procession. There's something here. The first ever, you know, disappearing act occurred. But Melies, through this film, through 14 minutes, is able to take the public consciousness and give them a story. It's 14 minutes, but what it does, it shows the cacophony of sound, and you can even just watch them, and even though it's silent, mm -hmm. you can kind of hear a din of people, it's so well done. They all decide to go, they pick a certain amount, they get in this capsule mm -hmm. that's positioned on top of a roof, mm -hmm. so crazy, and they push it, it goes to the moon, they get there, they meet these crazy aliens. It's down in the center of the moon where they go. They have this magical uh, things found in Earth because they really didn't know. Yeah. They dissolve into green dust, the, the moon men. Um, 
it's like giant mushrooms. mushrooms. Right. Yeah, like little crazy looking stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they take one of these guys and they decide they have to get back. And it's a very dramatic scene where it's teetering on a cliff. Off a cliff and, and one guy gets out on a string and pulls, pulls it. it. And then it and goes down. And suddenly he jumps on top. Yeah, and gets doesn't taken it go in the, the ocean, right? Yeah, which is kind of odd. I'm like, yeah. how is it flying from the moon straight down into, right. into the ocean? But then which they was, get back. Which was the only live outdoor version in that film, that, that, that ocean scene. Right. Everything else was done in his studio. And Amazing. then they get back to great fanfare. Mm -hmm. And they have one of the moon men with them. To capture him? Yeah. But that's like the gist of the whole plot of the film. Even mm. though I told you in the beginning, we have to give you like a linear way of talking about mm. it. That film was the first science fiction film. Correct. The first fantasy film. <laughs> Everything started from there and then moved, moved on, moved forward. And also they had no idea about atmosphere or gravity. There was none of that. Right. And so like they just went up there and they got out and they're running all around and you know, yeah, they how could do you breathe. breathe. I mean, they, they didn't know about they had, any of they that no stuff. Clue. But he made he made a story without making a story through his theatrical experience. He was able to take a concept and give people fantasy, give them like what could be and you know, suspend your disbelief for a second, and this is what really happens when you go to the moon. And um it's just really awe-inspiring to watch something and put yourself in that time frame thinking this was something that made people dream. It's a combination of what they knew that was tangible on earth and this fantastic magician's imagination. Right. And that's what I say. It's just like, I think it's beautiful mm -hmm. and dreamlike and it's so worth it. I mean, I think if you're going to watch silent films and I wish everybody would, because the more you watch something, the more you'll understand it and get into it. And we're gonna go through that over the next four weeks because we don't wanna throw people into a film that would be more discerning for a silent film devotee. Mm -hmm. But to start, start with this film because you'll be fascinated. Right. Stump me. All right, we're going to do my thing before we get into a quick deep discussion because I've been. This, this is one of the reasons why I'm. You're doing not even this. drinking. I'm. Oh yes, you are. It's half gone. Hello. See, I just drink. do like ladylike sips. We have a tall highball glass, folks, in, in audio land and radio land, and um, my glass is half finished. I I need a drink for your question. So Joe's thing. Let me see if you can uh, answer this He's question, go my dear. He's going through 1,300 pages oh. of notes to find the most obscure oh, I, possible I, I, thing. He can ask me. I need to I'll make up an answer. I need to warn the viewers, though. When trying to watch this film, as I was saying before, uh -huh. um, find one with the appropriate music. I was having a hard time. Like, I, was, I watched one, like, there's no music to this one. So they had a version with, yep. that was silent, completely That's silent. All the silent films have been remastered, reworked. People get a hold of them. They do things to them. But in actuality, the music was an important piece of this. When you of went course. to a theater play, you had someone playing yes. the piano, a yeah. little, maybe a small orchestra. One, the one version that I came across, again, you'll see re, re, reincarnations of this movie every 10 or so many years. But in 2012, yeah. they did um, <clears throat> French electronic music duo Air composed a modern soundtrack to this movie, mm -hmm. uh, bringing a contemporary touch. And it sucked. It was so bad. Um, so you might come across that. So trying to find the right version of the film to the right music right. Really is, is extremely important. Trip to the Moon created something new, something unique, science fiction, um, animation, uh, a way of looking at and being told a story. Today, we have artificial intelligence. So my question to you is, artificial intelligence, good or bad for film? Bad. 100%. Really? Well, you know, I don't know. You know, I have my opinion and I'm very definitive on things, mm -hmm. but I say yes, 100% bad. Because the more we get advanced, the more we regress. The less is to the imagination. This is imagination. Imagination was, even with the, the, the studio system when it was in place, exposition and imagination were important. Now technology is doing everything. And even though you can program a computer and you can make it look slick as all, you know, like Vaseline, the imagination is being leached out of everything. But I think if we're gonna be like Idiocracy. I say Idiocracy, the movie, is a documentary now. Mm -hmm. Because we're just gonna be blobs that sit and stare. And I just, I'm, I'm, you know, I have a landline still, please. I'd rather have a buggy and a horse out there than, no, oh, I love my Kia. But anyway, oh. why should people watch this? People should watch this for 
the history. I love history. People should watch this for the understanding of film. Um, I think people should watch this just for the pure fantasy of it. See something really neat before your eyes happening in a time when this was something brand new, the birth of film. I mean, that's really the era Correct. in which we're talking about. Um, so highly recommend you watch A Trip to the Moon. Get it on Amazon, get it from another source, but just get it and get the right music to go with yeah, it. Yeah, and the libraries too. too. You can get stuff at the libraries mm -hmm. if you know you don't have all these streaming services. And if you say you love film, you have to learn about some of the silent films. And this is your toe, dipping your toe in the pond in silent films. And I'm sure that after you see it, you'll want to see something else. You know, mm -hmm. on a rainy day, see another. 14 minutes of your time is worth centuries, well, yeah. a lifetime worth of film history. Um, so definitely watch it. D.W. Griffith, who we will be exploring two of his films in future episodes, said about Milliers, I owe him everything. Correct. And I think we as cinephiles and the public owe him everything yeah. for his imagination, for his worldliness. So Deb, we've taken a trip to the moon. Yeah. So where are we going next? Well, well first of all, I have a watch list. Oh, You're forgetting the big mo my big moment. For podcast people, I yeah, did an and, and I must say, before I do my watch list, this drink is really good. My number one is called The Extraordinary Voyage, please, from 2011, and it chronicles the cinematic journey of A Trip to the Moon. So after you watch Trip to the Moon, if you can get this, and you probably can get it at the library or with streaming, or even trip, Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. And if Trip to the Moon is on, they're probably going to have this well as well. So it'll tell you all about it and you'll want to see it. Whimsical Illusions, 1909, another one made by Melias. And it's a magician and his assistant do a series of magic tricks making potted plants appear and other feats to demonstrate new film techniques. And it's amazing. It's like he disappears, he shows up, things happen. So it's just a series of if you were in an audience watching magic tricks back mm -hmm. in the day. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of fun. Now this is a weird film that was a cult film, but it was called Fantastic Planet mm -hmm. from 1973. Animal-like drags rule the planet and humans serve as household pets called alms. That's until one alm decides to usurp the drags and cause a revolution. And it was innovative at the time, and everybody went and saw it, because probably in 1973, everybody was stoned. And it was one of those good films to see when you <laughs> were stoned. Not me, but everybody else. All right, Metropolis. 1927, futuristic city divided between the working class and the city planners. The son of the city's mastermind falls in love with a working class prophet who predicts the coming of a savior to mediate the differences between them. The visual of the robot in it is as iconic as Joe's moon face. Make a muscle so your face, your chest expands. And it has a fantastically restored soundtrack. Metropolis has been done probably three or four times with different soundtracks, but 1972 is the greatest version. I saw it in New York at Angelica Theater back then. Whole audience was filled. Fantastic. Out of these four, if you watch one, watch Metropolis. And that's my watch list, Joe. Debbie, there is one film I'm surprised you didn't mention. Well, I have four weeks of this stuff to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hugo, Martin Scorsese. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> it had such a large piece of that film was dedicated to George Milliers. It did. All my research, it kept on returning back to Hugo. See Hugo, see Hugo. Well, Some people said maybe the film wasn't that good, list. but they said if you watch anything about Hugo, you got to watch and pay attention to the dedication, the tribute that Scorsese does to George Milliers. That's my watch list, folks. And uh, Hugo's a good film. Yeah. Well, you can always add to it. I don't own the watch list. What I only do? slave for hours looking for these films. <laughs> she didn't <mention> Hugo. <laughs> well. Anyway. Are well, we done? We're, we've been to the moon and back. I'll Thank say. you, George Milliers. And uh, we have a lot of places to go, but where are we going next? Well. You never know where we're going until we go there.